Welcome back to another video in our chicken genetics series. Regardless of whether or not you've held a silky feathered bird, whether it be a silky or another breed with silky feathering, just by looking at pictures, it isn't hard to tell they are probably one of the softest things out there. And pretty cute too. In this video, I will be explaining the science behind silky feathering, as well as going over six different Punnett squares to show all the combinations of breeding silky feathered birds to normal feathered birds to get what you want out of your breeding program. Silky feathering is caused by a single gene that affects their feather structure, particularly the hooks on the barbules of the feather. Before we go into the breeding aspect of this, we need to take a look at feather anatomy to figure out what this gene really does. Here we have a contour feather from a regular chicken. The first thing you'll probably notice is this long, hard pole. This is called the shaft. At the bottom of the shaft, you should notice the thickest part, sometimes called a quill or calamus. Going up the feather, you should see a fluffy part, as well as the harder part of the feather. This hard part of the feather is called the vein. If you look very closely, you should notice hundreds of barbs that protrude from the shaft. If you look even closer, you should be able to see sets of tiny hairs protruding from the barbs. These are called the barbules. Some barbules have tiny hooks on them, and they hook onto the barbules that don't. This forms the vein of the feather. If we go back down the feather to the fluffy part, you should notice that while it does have barbs and barbules, none of the barbules have hooks on them, which is why the feather puffs out in all directions rather than forming a vein. In other words, the lack of hooks on the barbules is what is causing this part of the feather to be so fluffy. If we come back to our silkies, although you may find some hard feathers around the tail and end of the wings that do have barbules with hooks on them, the rest of the feathers lack hooks on their barbules, so they can't zip together to form a vein. Although it is often said that silkies have down feathers all over their body, this is false. Although they do have down feathers over some parts of their body, the majority of their feathers are actually semi-plume feathers. The difference between the two types of feathers is that semi-plume feathers have a rachis. When we look at the shaft of a flight feather, we should notice the thicker part at the bottom, called a quill or calamus, and the thinner part at the top, which is referred to as the rachis. Down feathers, on the other hand, only have the thicker part of the shaft, called the calamus, and lack the thinner part of the shaft, called a rachis. This is why the barbs of the feathers puff out in all directions, as they don't have a rachis to keep them in an organized structure. Semi-plume feathers, on the other hand, do have a rachis, which helps keep the feathers flatter and gives them more shape. The majority of the feathers you see on silkies, like on the neck, back, breast, and sides, are actually semi-plume feathers. You can find down feathers on silkies in all the same places that you would find down feathers on normal feather chickens. The point of all this is that the only difference between silky feathering and normal feathering is that the silky gene eliminates the hooks from the barbules. It does not change the feathers to down feathers. The truth is, semi-plume feathers are almost, if not completely, identical to contour feathers. The only difference between the two feather types is that semi-plume feathers lack hooked barbules. Semi-plume feathers on silky feathered birds are found in all the same places you would find contour feathers on normal feathered chickens. Now that we know what the gene does, let's look at how to breed for it. The gene for silky feathering is recessive. It is also an autosomal gene, which just means that it is not sex-linked. The gene symbol for silky feathering is a lowercase h. The gene symbol is lowercase to represent that silky feathering is recessive. And the gene for the absence of silky feathering or for normal feathering is a capital H with a plus sign afterwards. Since the gene symbol is a capital H, we know that it is dominant. The plus sign after the H represents wild type, which shows that normal feathering is the natural unmutated gene. Red jungle fowl are considered to be the original chickens, and since they had normal feathering, we know that normal feathering is the wild type. Normal feathering over silky feathering is an example of simple dominance. This means that regardless of whether a chicken has one or two copies of the gene for normal feathering, they will have normal feathering. One more thing before we look at the Punnett squares is the difference between phenotype and genotype. A bird's phenotype is what it looks like on the outside, and a bird's genotype is its genetic makeup. For example, both of these birds have normal feathering. Their phenotype is normal feathering. However, this bird's genotype is capital H plus slash capital H plus. 
This means that this bird is homozygous for normal feathering. This bird's genotype, on the other hand, is capital H plus slash lowercase h. This means that it has one copy of the gene for normal feathering and one copy of the gene for silky feathering. Although phenotypically these two birds are the same, genotypically they are different. When dealing with simple dominance as opposed to incomplete or co-dominance, without test breeding, we have no way to tell what a bird's genotype is unless it is homozygous for the recessive trait. For example, this bird here is a silky. His phenotype is for silky feathering. Because silky feathering is a recessive trait, meaning it needs two copies to be expressed, we know that his genotype is lowercase h slash lowercase h. Keeping good records is an absolute must in any breeding program, however, it is especially important when you're dealing with simple dominant genes. Please keep in mind that throughout this video, I will be saying percentages as if it is guaranteed that 50% of the offspring will look like this, 25% will look like this, etc. It's not guaranteed. All of these numbers are based off the calculations you get by plugging genes into a Punnett square. Keep in mind that these numbers are based off hatching hundreds or even thousands of chicks from a certain pairing. Just hatching a small batch of 10 or even 25 won't guarantee that 5 chicks will definitely look like this, 10 will look like this, etc. So now that we finally have all that information covered, let's move on to our Punnett squares. Our first Punnett square here is very simple. It is just proving that breeding two birds that are homozygous for normal feathering will only produce other birds that are homozygous for normal feathering. So the phenotype of all the offspring is normal feathering, and the genotype of all the offspring is capital H plus slash capital H plus, which means that they are homozygous or pure for normal feathering. Without keeping good records though, you may not know if the birds you are breeding together are homozygous or heterozygous for normal feathering. But if both birds are definitely homozygous for normal feathering, then all offspring will be homozygous for normal feathering. Our next Punnett square here is also very simple. It is just showing that breeding two silky feather birds together will only ever produce offspring with silky feathering. The gene for silky feathering is recessive, meaning it can't hide any other genes. This means that the only thing you will ever get from breeding two silky feathered birds is silky feathered birds. The phenotype of all the offspring is silky feathering, and their genotype is lowercase h slash lowercase h, which means that they are homozygous for silky feathering. Now, here is where things get a little more complex. This Punnett square here shows what happens if you breed a bird that is homozygous for normal feathering to a bird that is homozygous for silky feathering. 100% of the offspring here will have a phenotype for normal feathering, but their genotype will be capital H plus slash lowercase h. This means that they have one gene for normal feathering and one gene for silky feathering, which means that they are heterozygous. This fourth Punnett square is where things get just a bit more confusing. This shows what happens if you breed a bird that is homozygous for normal feathering to a bird that is split to silky feathering. Both birds have a phenotype for normal feathering. However, one bird has a genotype of capital H plus slash capital H plus, which means it is homozygous for normal feathering. And the other bird has a genotype of capital H plus slash lowercase h, which means that it is heterozygous for normal feathering. When you breed these two birds together, all of the offspring will phenotypically have normal feathering but genotypically 50% will be homozygous for normal feathering and 50% will be split to silky feathering. Our fifth Punnett square here shows what happens when you breed a bird that phenotypically has normal feathering but genotypically is split to silky feathering to a bird with silky feathering. This pairing is one of my favorites because it allows you to get some birds that phenotypically have normal feathering and some birds that have silky feathering. In this pairing, 50% of the offspring will have normal feathering but will carry the gene for silky feathering, and their genotype will be capital H plus slash lowercase h. The remaining 50% will phenotypically have silky feathering, and their genotype will be lowercase h slash lowercase h. 
This pairing is also a great way to test breed to tell if the normal feathered bird is homozygous or heterozygous for normal feathering. If you are trying to test if a chicken you have is homozygous or heterozygous for normal feathering, breed it to a bird with silky feathering. If even one chick has silky feathering, then we know that the bird in question is heterozygous for normal feathering. If you hatch a large number of chicks and every single one has normal feathering, then you can take an educated guess that the bird in question is homozygous for normal feathering. And finally, our sixth pundit square, which is the most complex pairing. This pairing shows what happens if you breed two birds with normal feathering that are both split to silky feathering together. Remember, the phenotype of both of these birds is normal feathering, but their genotype is capital H plus slash lowercase h, which means that they are split to silky feathering. If we breed these birds, 25% of the offspring will be homozygous for normal feathering. Their genotype is capital H plus slash capital H plus. 50% of the offspring will be heterozygous for normal feathering, or in other words, split to silky feathering. Their phenotype is normal feathering, but their genotype is capital H plus slash lowercase h. And keep in mind that you won't be able to tell these birds from the ones that are homozygous for normal feathering. And the remaining 25% of the offspring will be homozygous for silkied feathering, meaning their phenotype is silkied feathering and their genotype is lowercase h slash lowercase h. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new. As always, if you ever have any questions, feel free to comment or contact me via any of the methods given in the description. Thank you and I will see you next time.